Sunday is that special time for us to get together and study the Word of God. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning for our presentation of Give Me the Bible. So go get your Bible, sit down, and let's study together from the pages of God's eternal Word right here on Give Me the Bible. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dan Manuel, and I'll be your host today right here on Give Me the Bible. And I do want to tell you that we're not here to entertain you like many of the religious programming on television today, but we're here to share with you the Word of God. And I really believe that's what you want to hear. I certainly hope so. We thank all of you who watch us regularly right here on this uh, telecast, and we hope that you'll encourage your friends to do the same. This morning, we're going to be talking about the awesomeness of God's grace and the relationship that we all have with our Father who is in heaven. And we're happy this morning to tell you that we're offering a new DVD right here on this program, and it is postpaid, free of charge. No one's going to be knocking on your door or giving you a call like many of the telemarketers do today, but uh, it is free of charge, and we'll be happy to send it to you upon your request. If you'll call the 800 number that appears throughout the program today periodically, then uh, we'll be happy to get it into the mail to you right away. It is entitled God's Kingdom. God's kingdom. So please write for it. Give us a call. And uh, by the way, give us the call letters of the station upon which you heard uh, and viewed Give Me the Bible today. This morning, we do want to talk about the grace of God. You know, the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, but it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and following. Now, as we talk about grace, there are a number of things that come to our mind. We want to begin by calling upon Carrie Clark right now with the Central Church of Christ in Athens, Texas. And Carrie, it's uh, so glad to have, we're, we're all glad that you're here this morning. And uh, we're going to ask you about this grace of God and the relationship that we have with God through His grace. Thank you, Dan. We're going to be reading from 1 Peter chapter 2, and I'd like for us to begin our reading in verse number 9. Peter writes, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He says in verse 10, which in time past were not a people, but now are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. As we think about what Peter said, we want to focus on verse number nine, and we want to especially look how Peter describes us as a chosen generation. We're going to be talking about our position in the grace of God that we have been chosen. I don't know if you were like I was when I was in school, and that's been a day or two ago, but when I was in school, I wanted to be chosen first. You know, if, if we're lining up to play football or baseball or whatever it is, I wanted to be first. I wanted to have that first position. Oh, choose me, choose me, I, I want to play. And you know, God chose us. He put us, he says, as a chosen generation. And this word chosen, when you begin to uh, examine it, what Peter is talking about, this is our position in Christ. We are now in a better position than anyone in the world could ever be. As a matter of fact, this word is used in Matthew chapter 13 in a very interesting statement. And I, I hope you've got your Bible. I hope you're turning along with me as we go through the Word of God because I want you to put me to the test. I want you to put uh, all of us to the test. If we're not teaching what the Bible says, then we want you to contact us and show us where we might be misrepresenting the Word of God. But in Matthew 13 and verse number 22, Matthew 13 and verse number 22, Jesus said, He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of this world, he says, and the deceitfulness of riches, they begin to choke out the word of God. And then he says in verse 23, but the one that received the seed, 
Into the good ground is he that heareth the word of God, he understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth also some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some twenty. When we think about what Jesus said, we are those that have been elected. We are now in a place of prominence, and that place of prominence is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are a chosen generation. Well, you're exactly right, Kerry, and what a, what a wonderful blessing it is to be chosen by God. I heard a story several years ago about uh, a woman uh, who said she always wanted to marry Mr. Wright, but she had to settle for Mr. Pretty Good. <laughs> well, you know, in life, uh, sometimes we have to do that. But you know, aren't we thankful this morning, but that we as God's children are married to Mr. Wright, to our Father who is in heaven, and how thankful and grateful we ought to be. You know, when you read that book of 1 Peter chapter 2, especially in verse 9, you understand that the believer uh, also not only is chosen by God and has a relationship with him, but that the believer has many blessings that accompany that relationship. And we're going to call on Barry Haynes right now to tell us about those great blessings that come our way. You know, I, I recently was reminded, I, I watched a show that I hadn't watched since I was a young man. And I remember when I watched it the first time, the, the character in there, he had a, you know, it seemed like a dead end job and his wife always nagged him and he, he didn't seem to have much uh, going for him. And I always thought how sad he was. And as I got older, I look back to him, I think that guy had a pretty good life. He had a job, he had a wife, he, he had something to do. And you, my perspective changed because I realized how much of a blessing those things are. You know, as Carrie was reading to us in that passage in 2 Peter about the blessings, it talks about three different areas that we're described as having uh, rewards from God. That first one is we are a royal priesthood. You know, Jesus, as the Hebrew writer describes in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 and 16, is the great high priest. He is the advocate between us and God. But because of what he has done, we also have a place before God. We are, as Revelation 1, 6 says, part of that priesthood of believers. And because of that, we now have access to the presence of God because we are a holy nation. A nation means people, holy means set apart. We are a set apart people, a people that are, that are set apart to be God's chosen people. Our citizenship is in heaven and we belong to that family of God. But we're also a people of God's own possession, a peculiar people, as he says. That, that idea there is we are God's people. We have been purchased by the blood of God. We have been made one by Jesus Christ and his, his uh, dedication to us. You know, Titus uses that in Titus, or Peter writes that to Titus in Titus chapter two and verses 13 and 14, where he says, our great God and savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself to redeem us from every lawless deed, to purify himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. You know, we are a peculiar people in the sense that the world looks at us and they, they don't understand us. They don't see how good of life that we truly have. But because of God's great blessings for us, we have a job. We have a family. We have a purpose. And that gives a great meaning to life. You know, oftentimes people ask me about being a preacher and do I like my job? And of course, like any person, there are some days where I don't enjoy it. But I would, can honestly say I can't believe I get to do this for a living. I get to serve God. I get to preach His good news. But do you know we all have that blessing? We all have the greatest job. We can be priest of God. We have the greatest family, the people of God. We have a unique place, a unique purpose, because we are people of God's own possession, ready to show His will to the world. How great we and truly blessed we are. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing, isn't it, Barry? It really, really is. I don't know about you, but I'm getting a little bit tired of hearing about the royal family in the UK. I don't know about Meghan. I don't know the whole story or about Prince Harry, but uh, I know who the royal family really is, and that's those of us who are children of God. And I never tire of hearing about God's royal family. You know, these wonderful blessings that come our way, but that's not always been the case because Peter in this text says that at one time we were not a people of God. Isn't that right, Joe Hancock? Dan, that's exactly right. Uh, in fact, in uh, verse 10 of this 1 Peter chapter 2 passage, 
he speaks of those who were once not a people, and then in a little bit later in that same verse is, who had not obtained mercy. You know, the, the big problem is that, that before we understand the truth of the gospel, we, we become too friendly with the world. James 4 and verse 4, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity, and that word means hatred, hatred with God. Uh, God would not have us be friends with the world. Now, he put us here in this place. And uh, one of the instructors at, here at Brown Trail not, not too many years ago when I was a student here said that God had created the earth and, and this planet for the perfect information and data gathering facility for soul growing. And you think about that, we, we have a chance to look at what God has done and, and all the blessings he's given us and we can process that data and information and choose for ourselves to be on God's side or be on the side of the world. But that worldly side is enmity or hatred against God. And that's where those people were Peter addressed in this chapter two passage, that they were too friendly with the world. They had become separated from God and were not a chosen generation or chosen people. Now, in the Ephesian letter, Paul it says in chapter two, you were dead in trespasses and sins. Uh, those same folks who were friendly with the world have become dead in trespass and sins. In chapter 2 and verse 3 of the Ephesian letter, we're, na we're by nature children of wrath just as the others. <clears throat> in chapter 2 and verse 12, that by the time, the, or that at that time you were without Christ, being alienates, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, and having no hope and without God in the world. Dan, it, it is a case that before we hear the good news of the gospel, before we become Christians and part of that chosen generation, that chosen people, that we are full of worldliness. We are uh, battling against God, and he would have it the other way, that we battle with him and try to bring others with us into that same battle. We're in a spiritual battle, and some will be fighting on the devil's side, some be fighting on the Lord's side, and you have a choice. Which side do you stand? Which side do you fight? Uh, we pray this morning that it's on God's side. And if you're not yet there in that condition of being part of the chosen generation, uh, you have opportunity to do that while you're still breathing air and pumping blood. And it's just a matter of obeying the gospel, becoming a follower of Jesus, a Christian, just a Christian only, and living your life to please God. And if we can help you do that, we would pray and urge you to give us a call and let us do what, what we're supposed to be doing anyway. Joe, what you said this morning is so true. And, uh, you know, Jesus said that if we're not with him, we are against him. And so it's imperative for us to move to the side of Almighty God and to honor him and to be with him, to pick up your cross and follow him. Follow him on this pilgrimage of life. And that's really what we're on, isn't it? We're on a pilgrimage this morning. And uh, Jerry Munholland is here from Texarkana, Texas, at Hampton Church of Christ. Uh, tell us a little bit about that pilgrimage, Jerry. Thank you, Dan. It's such a pleasure to be here today and share and read some of God's eternal truths. And as we look at Peter and, and what he uh, had gone through and, and what he's writing to us as some of his last words that he would toward the end of his life to leave some advice to us who are Christians. And he talks about as our pilgrimage through this world, you know, I like to think of this as being citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And as we are citizens of that kingdom, there's certain responsibilities and certain things that we should do as citizens of that kingdom. And Peter says to abstain from worldly lust. He's saying is have a proper perspective of what's important in this life, of what's eternal and what is, uh, and what is temporary. And so it is, uh, he's saying the same thing as John is saying. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17, to love not the world, neither the things that are in this world. And he goes on to say that the things that are in this world are temporary. The things uh, of God are eternal. And so we have a choice uh, of choosing what is temporary and what is eternal, what is important, and what is everlasting. I want to look at uh, Moses in Hebrews chapter 11 as one example of choosing that which is good and that which is important. And he, in Hebrews chapter 11, if you read with me, it says, by faith, verse 24, of Moses of uh, Hebrews chapter 11, by faith Moses, when he was 
come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. You see what helped Moses make the right decision? He had respect unto recompense of the reward. He knew that he was a citizen of God, a citizen of the kingdom of God. He knew what was in, he knew what was going to last. It was an easy decision to leave all that Pharaoh had and all the riches of this world that had to offer. He says, I, that's not important. What's eternal is important. I would like to leave you with one thought that as we walk this walk and, and live this life here upon this earth, as Peter would say, abstain from earthly lust, which war against our soul that we're not citizens of this world trying to get to heaven. We're citizens of heaven trying to get through this world. Let's abstain from worldly lust. Thank you, Dan. Well, Jerry, thank you very much this morning for sharing those wonderful thoughts with us this morning about our relationship with God. We're happy also this morning to have with us Brother Randy Foreman. And uh, Randy, it's great to have you this morning on the program. Uh, he's a minister at the Oakwood Church of Christ in Oakwood, Texas. And uh, he knows full well, like all of us, that we're on that journey. We're on that pilgrimage. But we have a message to present to the world. And we have to be praising God along that way. Shouldn't that be the case, Randy? I think so, Dan. And by the way, thanks for having me on the program uh, with all of you. Uh, this morning. This first Peter passage, I think, is important that we read again. So look with me in your Bibles. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but you had not received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. You know, as Christians, they lived in the same environment as pagans did, and therefore they were subject to the same temptations and pressures. Peter tells them that as Christians, they are to act in a manner befitting their calling, and in so doing, win the respect of the non-believers. These Christians had left paganism and were being criticized by their pagan friends and relatives for leaving their old religions. Peter says that their good conduct may work in such a way as to win these people over to the very religion they criticized and end up glorifying God themselves. It is especially important to have good conduct because in those days, the criticism and some persecution were also coming from the government. God authorizes the idea of human government, but does not specify or bless any particular form. And so Peter shows them that part of this acceptable behavior includes respect and obedience for the form of government that existed at that time. Let us understand that a vocal witness shows forth the praises. The phrase show forth the praises means to vocally declare what the Lord has done for us. And we do this by praising and proclaiming his greatness. Also a visible message that they may be by your good works, means that our talk must be backed up with our walk. We are a powerful witness to the lost by our words and our deeds for either good or bad. We are to be lights in this darkened world that they may see Christ in us. Back to you, Dan. You know, when you really stop to think, uh, it's amazing how God works in this world, isn't it? And it's amazing how God works through his chosen people. Amazing how he works through royalty. Those of us who are part of God's kingdom, we are citizens of his kingdom. 
We're happy this morning to tell you also that we have Scout Bets with us this morning from over in Lufkin, Texas. And uh, the Scout, we're so glad that you're here also. You know, when you read this book of 1 Peter, especially chapter 2, there's so many life lessons to be learned from this particular text. If you will, this morning, kind of reiterate Uh, kind of reiterate some of them as we close our program today. Absolutely, Dan. We're so thankful once again to be here and to to represent the body of Christ. There are so many blessings within this life, and too many times we get caught up with the physical, but we are so spiritually blessed within the body. We need to remember our daily blessings within Christ. As we've been studying here in 1 Peter, we belong to God. We are His royal priesthood. We're a chosen people. We're a holy nation. We are a called out people. We've obtained mercy through God Almighty. We have to remember those blessings as we continue in our walk as a Christian. Number two, we we need to live a holy life because of our devotion to Christ. You think of all the things that Christ has done for us, ultimately coming down to this earth to to live as a man, to walk here and to, to give us that perfect example to love and to live his life in a way that we could follow after, to go to the cross and to die that death for you and for me. He did that so that we could have the opportunity at salvation. As followers of Jesus, we have chosen to follow him. It's our choice, and God gives us that free will to do so. If we are to be that holy nation, though, we must live that holy life, a life that is going to lead us to heaven. Our home is in heaven, and therefore we need to set our affection on things that are pointing us towards that goal. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 2, we need to set our minds on things above and not on things of this earth. We also think of of Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. We're to store up treasures in heaven, those things that are going to bring us closer to God. We should have a strong desire for our home in heaven, And this world is is passing away. It's not going to be here forever, and and we look forward to that day they were in heaven with God. We must control our lustful desires, as has been mentioned. The text reveals that it wars against our flesh. It is is an opposite. It is working against the things of God. And we we need to remember that there is a lost world watching us. Just as we have been taught the gospel, we have the responsibility to go out and teach others the good news of Christ. They're going to observe us and they're going to come to a conclusion and ultimately that desired outcome is that that they may also glorify God in the day. Thank you so much, Scout. We uh, really, really appreciate your being here today. And uh, well, we want to thank all of our panelists for these timely words and the discussion that we've, we've had today upon the Word of God. And isn't it a wonderful blessing to be called a child of the King? That makes us royal, doesn't it? Thank you so much for tuning in, and we uh, hope you'll tune in next week right here at this same time. Uh, Give Me the Bible is funded by uh, numerous congregations of the Lord's Church uh, all over, actually, the United States, mainly in Texas, Louisiana, and other places. But we're so glad that you watch every week, and many of you have written us to uh, maybe present questions that you'd like for us to discuss on this program, and we're happy to entertain those questions and uh, to deal with those uh, issues that confront you every day. Uh, as people in our world, God is always the answer. He always provides for us the very things that are essential to life and living. That was a promise that Jesus made, by the way, in the sixth chapter of the book of Matthew and verse 33. He said that if we, and it's always contingent, that if we seek first the kingdom of God, then those things will be added unto us. I'm thankful today for all of you, and uh, I hope that you'll visit the Church of Christ in your area. You know, sometimes the Lord's Church gets a lot of bad press, but I hope you're impressed with, with good press this morning as we have shared with you the timely truths of God's eternal Word. I think at the Church of Christ in your area, you'll find a group of people that love God and are seeking to do His will. If you're really searching for truth, that's where we direct you this morning, so do that. I'm Dan Manuel again, and I've been your host today along with all of our panelists, and we say thank you so much for being a part of our telecast, and please join us next week for another presentation of Give Me the Bible.
Sing the sweetest song of all. 